Hello, this is Coach Allison, and I'm back with Defy Aging for week 42. This week, we have a little starter circuit that you're going to be doing in your own space at your own pace. So you're going to be counting your own reps and everything for that. And then we'll move into uh, a circuit that we're going to be doing a standard rotation and doing that all as a group together. Uh, the little starter circuit that I mentioned, that is two exercises for three rounds, uh, counting, again, counting your own reps. Everything is for 10 reps. And of course, we'll review the exercises that are involved in that. But you're going to be doing that for three rounds at your own pace. Everyone will kind of be at their own, um, sorry, sort of be at, on the same pace for that. So yes, some people might finish a little bit faster or slower than others. But for the most part, everyone will sort of get done at the same time. Uh, so then after that, we can all start circuit two together, which is the rotation. And in that, there is five exercises for three rounds of 30 seconds on, 30 seconds off. So all together, we'll be doing seven different exercises uh, this week. Let's review what those are. All right, everybody. So uh, our first exercise for that in your own space, first circuit is a kettlebell halo to overhead press. This is, uh, we're kind of getting creative with these halos lately. Uh, Cause last week we had that, or mobility week, we had that hip to halo. So this is another variety with the halo. Bottoms up starting position, just like any kettlebell halo. Be ready for our hair to get a little funky, right? So what we're gonna do is 10 of these, five in each direction. We go one halo. So we go around the head like normal. When we get back to the chest, we're gonna press overhead. When we get to the start again, we're going to reverse the direction of our halo. So this is where it's a little, got to kind of focus because we have to try to remember which direction we went. If you forget and you kind of double up going the same direction a couple of times, that's okay. We just want to try to shoot for 10 total. Okay, so that it is okay if you go this way and the next time you go that way again. Don't overthink that too much. So again, a halo we want to try to drop the, this is a shoulder mobility exercise primarily, and then a little bit of strengthening as well. So we want to try to drop the back of the, sorry, the, the bell of the kettlebell as low behind you as possible. And that's where the mobility, see how it's way behind my head right here? And then keeping it low as we come around to the front. And then we do our press. Um, but what we're trying to avoid is keep, like, keep, keeping it really high like this. So that's where the mobility comes into play. The lower and the tighter we're able to keep it around our head, the more we are moving that shoulder in that ball and socket joint here. If we keep the range of motions higher and looser, we're not really moving that much of that ball and socket joint. So I'll show you one more time. So low and tight <clears throat> is possible. Get back to the front, press it up, bring it back down and reverse the direction. So 10 of those, that is our kettlebell uh, halo to overhead press. Exercise two for circuit A, 180, as referring to 180 degrees, 180 shoulder abduction. So this one is tricky. I would recommend starting maybe the first round with no weights at all. If anything, we wanna use very light weights. I would maybe suggest no more than five pounds for any of our participants. So we've got to do a little ego check on this. Now, if you can typically do a shoulder press with 10s, 12s, 15s, 20s, still check your ego on this one. Because uh, this, is, this is typically more of a, a, a physical therapy type of exercise. So that should tell you that it does what you do want to go very light, minimal weight. So I have threes here. Um, palms are forward for the entire movement. So a supine grip, so a supinated grip at the bottom, um, palms forward. And we do a, keep the arms mostly straight. You never lock your elbow in like a tight lock. So you just kind of keep it soft, but not a full bend. So I hope that makes sense. And we do a full 180. So they come all the way up. If you can touch them at the top gently, great. If they do stop short, if they're sticky, if you have any pinching sensation or pain stop at that pain point and then ease back just a little bit so we don't push through any pain if you have a directive from a physical therapist or anything to not go that high listen to all of that before you listen to me so but if there isn't any sticking point or any directive from a physical therapist uh, do try to go all the way up and this is a slow moving exercise okay so we're not it's not like a jumping jack. We're not going fast like this, okay? So 
again, I need to step back so you can get all of my arms in the frame. So as you can see, I'm doing a full 180, full half of my body. Okay. So I'm using threes and just doing those few reps. My shoulders are getting tired. They're getting fatigued. I was keeping that palm forward grip the whole time. Um, and, uh, you, again, I would recommend no one go over five pounds for this at the max. If you're doing this with something too heavy and you need to start like bending the elbow excessively like this, it is too heavy. So please drop the weight to something lighter and you might not even need weights at all. If not, you can do a, a gentle fist position with your hand or you can just do an open palm and you can do this with no weights at all and you're still gonna get that nice range of motion. You're still gonna get that nice burn in the shoulders, okay? So that is the second exercise. And I don't think I said it, but this first little starter circuit that we're doing in our own space is all shoulder mobility. So that is why there is a heavy shoulder focus on these first two exercises. Okay, we are done with our shoulder mobility first circuit. Now we are starting our rotation. The first exercise in the rotation is a suitcase squat. You can use dumbbells or kettlebells for this, whatever you prefer. And it's really just a squat with a weight in each hand. So we don't want to hold the arms out excessively like this. So make sure your squat stance is narrow enough where you're not feeling like you're having to hold your arms out wide. So if I, my legs were here, my legs are kind of bumping into the weights here. So I'm going to narrow my stance a little so my arms can just comfortably hang straight down. And I'm doing my squats just with some weights in my hands. The weights just stay comfortably down at my sides. Okay, normal squat, sinking those hips back. Make sure you're not, you know, protruding. So can you put an ING on that word? My knees aren't protruding forward like that. Yes, you can. Um, so my hips are going back. I'm keeping my heels glued to the ground. I'm not leaning excessively forward. This isn't a squat. Okay, so I'm not doing that. You want to keep your chest up. See how my chest is kind of up here. All right, uh, the weights are always optional. We can turn that into body weight squat only. Feel free to drop the weights like I just did and turn this into a body weight squat. Add the weights um, if and when you feel ready for that step. Next up is a stability ball squat. Uh, excuse me, stability ball plank. So we got our stability ball, elbows down first, forearms down first, then step the legs back. Wanna make sure that the torso is not resting on the ball. So you can start like this, but then we want to lift the torso off the ball. You want that nice diagonal position with your body, meaning we don't want to stick the hips up like this. You can do this. If you have one of these slightly smaller ones, you can do a knee version like this. Still want to make sure, though, that we have a diagonal line from the neck down to the knees and we're not sticking the butt back like this. This really is a challenge because we have this bend in the hips here. So I'm making a tabletop. But if I sink, roll the ball forward and sink my hips down, now I'm feeling the challenge in those core muscles. So you can do a knee version. If your club only has like the larger size balls, the knee version might not work super great. Um, anywho, you can, as a starting point for a ball plank, press the ball into a wall. And do your plank like this. This is kind of a great starting point, uh, point for learning to do a ball plank because you have the stability of the wall. So the ball can't completely roll anywhere, but it's getting your body ready or, or used to the feeling of the squishiness of the ball. That's a good starting point. Pardon me. Um, however, we can also do uh, a standard elbow plank up on a bench something that is 100% stable um, and start there and work towards the ball when you are ready. Next up is dumbbell deadlifts, RDLs, Romanian deadlifts. We're using dumbbells this week as opposed to a kettlebell and that's just gonna help us keep our shoulders uh, more down and back and help us keep our backs a little more flat. Okay, so I want you to pretend you're sort of holding on to a barbell with these dumbbells. The barbell would of course be strict and straight like this the dumbbells offer us the ability to sort of open those arms up kitty corner like this. So 
Start straight at the top, okay? Don't start slouched or anything, so straight. Pop those hips back a little bit first. As you do that, put a slight bend in your knees. See how my starting position was hips bending and knees bending at the same time? Continue that motion with those dumbbells drawing straight down the thighs and then the shins. Soft bend in the knees so we don't lock the knees in straight like this. Never not lock the knees in straight ever, ever. Soft bend in the knees, but not so much bend that it turns into a squat. So make sure we're not squatting. You really only have to go down, for most people, it'll be about the middle of the shin. So just past the knee, when you feel a good stretch in your hamstring. When you feel a good stretch in your hamstring, that's typically low enough. That's when you know you can come back up. You typically want to keep, that should be still about head higher than the heart or at least maybe about level, but you don't wanna go head lower than the heart. If you're feeling like you are needing to get this low, uh, your coach can work with you on fixing your form because something isn't working right. You shouldn't have to get that low to feel the stretch and the hamstrings. We might need to fix where your hip position is or fix um, how much bend you have in your knees. Uh, keep the back nice and flat. Try to avoid this rounded back position. All that stuff together creates the perfect deadlift. So I'll show you just a couple. So you can put all those cues together. Keep the hands close to the shins. If your hands are coming out here, that means you're not shifting your hips back enough. So watch me shift my hips back and see how my hands kind of move closer to my thigh or my shins. All right, so that is our dumbbell Romanian deadlift. Next up is a shuffle with a burpee. So there's gonna be a sh kind of a shorter shuffle route laid out at the end of the each end of the shuffle route is a going to be a box set up to do one burpee so you do your shuffle this way burpee shuffle this way burpee continue i have a box set up on one end and i'll show you what this is going to look like so a shuffle is you're in a kind of a quarter or a half of a squat like this hips back bend in the knees kind of arms up and ready and we shuffle, 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 shuffle. Okay, you should have a, be soft in the balls of your feet and you're kind of bringing those feet together. Should be a soft little bounce. It's, it's very minimal impact, so this isn't a hard impact. It's very gentle if you have that cadence correct. So I'll show you what it looks like with the burpees. So you, where my camera is, would be one end. I just did my burpee, okay? Now I'm gonna shuffle down to the other end where that box is. Hands down. Jump back, jump in, jump up, shuffle down. I would do my next burpee out of a box here, okay? Shuffle again, burpee. I will show you some modified burpee options because everyone can take part in this if you are unable to do the full burpee. You can step back, jump in, reach up, or perhaps the other jump feels better for you so you can jump back step in reach up you can do any variation of take of changing those jumps for some people the jump back feels okay thanks but the jump in doesn't for some people vice versa so you so notice how I showed you how what it looks like to step back jump in or jump back and step in and then for both those versions I didn't do the jump up at the top I reached up instead. So you can do any variation of changing those jumps to steps, but everyone can do the burpee at both ends using some variation of those steps. So that is our shuffle with the burpee. Last station is a three point wide row. So the three point row we do quite often. It's when you have something here to support yourself as opposed to doing the two point row, which you don't have any added support. So we do that a lot. But the typical way is palm turned in, neutral grip, like this, right? So notice I call it a three-point wide row. That means we're going to be taking the side with the weight, and we're going to be coming out wide as opposed to tight and narrow. So we're changing a couple of things here, okay? Still have your support here, so we have three points of support, one, two, three. Take your weight, now you'll need to go a little bit lighter. 
if I can typically do my three point row with, let's say a 20, I'm going to grab like a 15 or a 10 today or this week to do the wide row. Keep that in mind. Go lighter than normal because this is going to be harder the way we're doing this. Normal grip is neutral. Palm turned inward towards my center of my body. We're turning the grip overhand, which is a prone grip. So see how I turn that prone overhand grip? And now normally, again, normal, we come in tight to the body. We're coming out wide now. So watch what I'm gonna do different. My elbow is coming way out wide, almost like I'm making a corner of a box shape. I'm gonna drop the weight so I can keep my arm up here. See how, can, I'm trying to find the best angle. See how I'm coming out wide as opposed to narrow like this. So that is the difference this week. Prone grip, overhand grip, coming out wide. Significantly harder because we're moving the, bot, the arm out wider from the body. And when you do that, it's physics, right? When you go farther out from the body, it's gonna make the weight feel heavier. So you need to go lighter. Okay, so like I said, if I can typically do the normal narrow row with a 20, I would probably grab like a 10 or a 15. So I want you to think of that when you're picking your weight for this this week. Um, we're gonna switch arms halfway through. It's only a 30 second set. So you end up only doing 15 seconds on each side. But again, going out wide, your arms should kind of make a nice 90 degree angle at the top position because you're out in that nice wide angle. So very, very different. Let's give it a try this week. All right, our team builder, <clears throat> pardon me, is a battle rope squat challenge. So every person in the session is gonna get one time up at the rope, okay? What they are gonna do is 25, two, five, 25 double arm slams. One, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Everyone else behind them or wherever everyone else is, is holding an isometric squat. Yes, so you hold the bottom of a squat and you just hold it, okay? Um, they're holding that while the person up at the rope is doing their 25. When their 25 is done, everyone can come up and that's their chance to kind of like oh, rest their legs. Whoever else is, whoever next is up at the rope comes up. Break time is over, everyone else is back down into their isometric squat. So person at the rope, do your slams kind of fast because you don't want your fellow teammates to have to hold their squat very long, right? Yeah, exactly. So um, anyway, that is our team builder. Encourage everybody, cheer each other on, clap for each other. Let's make this fun. When you're holding your squat, there's no putting hands on the legs. Okay, that's cheating, let's, let's be real here. Um, it's not just like leaning down like this. It's bending the, it's, it's, it's a squat. So bend the knees. Let's make this a real squat. Anyway, let's, let's have some fun with this week's team builder. All right, that's week 42. I hope everyone has a great time. See you back next week.